Gambia may be the smallest country in Africa, but it will host the second largest gathering of world leaders in 2022. To successfully host the OIC summit and put the Gambia on the global stage, the government of the Gambia set up OIC Gambia to mobilize resources for the implementation of key development and infrastructure projects on a scale never seen before. 20 new roads will be constructed across the country and the Bertel Harding Highway will be expanded into a dual carriage highway of two lanes on each side from the airport to Sting Corner. All people in the Gambia deserve clean water and a constant flow of electricity. Therefore, an entirely new water system will be constructed, including new transmission and distribution networks to meet the increasing demand. In order to provide a more reliable supply of electricity, the OIC Gambia project will replace and double the capacity of the Nawak transformers and overhead electric cables. We will equip the police with modern apparatus and technical training in an effort to keep the streets of the Gambia safe. By building the largest international conference center in the region, a five-star hotel with state-of-the-art facilities, first-class mobility services, and improving the VVIP experience at the Banjul International Airport, OIC Gambia will position the Gambia as the leading conference destination in West Africa. With our partners in the tourism sector, we will reinforce the preeminent position of our nation, the Smiling Coast, as a go-to destination. The OIC Gambia will create strategic partnerships that calls for the involvement of local talent and businesses as a matter of requirement. In short, OIC Gambia projects will create jobs, boost commerce, accelerate growth, improve the urban outlook and lifestyles of many families across the Gambia. So let's support the OIC Gambia as it prepares us for one of the biggest global events, OIC Gambia, building today for a better tomorrow. We are live in Banjul, broadcasting for viewers in the Gambia and around the world. This is GRTS News at 2200 hours. In our top stories, Gambia and Bissau Guinean leaders agreed to work together to strengthen Banjul Bissau relations. In the ongoing Usman Koro Sisa murder trial, High Court George Ibrahim Ajayte orders parties to produce original text of the 1997 constitution before he delivers any ruling on immunity motion. GRTS speaks to an official of the Guinean IEC in the Gambia about the elections in the West African country. Elsewhere around the world, anger and outrage across Nigeria after several protesters were reportedly shot dead at the Lekki toll gate. And attaining justice for Darfur victims, ICC chief prosecutor says Hassan al-Bashir must face justice without delay. Well, all that and much more coming ahead in this edition of the news. With me, I said Kater, and thanks for joining us.
delighted to have you here with us. We begin this bulletin with the presidency because His Excellency President Adam Abaro earlier left Banjul for Bissau for a day's walking visit to meet his Bissau Guinean counterpart, Umaru Sisoko Embalo. The president was seen off at the airport, airport by some key government officials. Mori S. Jala was at the airport to witness the departure and files in this report. President Adam Abaro was seen off at the Banjul International Airport by the various service chiefs as he jetted off to Bissau for a day's walking visit. Whilst in Guinea-Bissau, President Adam Abaro is expected to hold discussions with his Bissau Guinean host, President Umaru Sisoho Mbalo, on wide-ranging issues. Guinea-Bissau and the Gambia had a deep-rooted cultural and historical ties, and it is expected that the meeting between the two presidents will strengthen the already existing bilateral ties and cooperation between Bissau and Banjul. Modest Jalo, JRTS News at the Banjul International Airport. Meanwhile, the president, His Excellency Adam Abaro, has arrived in Guinea-Bissau at the start of an official visit at the invitation of His Excellency President Umari Sisoko Embalo. This is the first visit by President Baro to Guinea-Bissau and is seen as a major step to, towards cementing the already existing relations between Banjul and Bissau. As we hear in this report by Momodu Jalo, who is with the presidential delegation in Bissau, the two leaders have agreed to work together to take Gambia-Guinea relations rather to a whole new level. President His Excellency Adam Abaro and delegation arrived at the Osvaldo Vieira International Airport at noon local time. The president was received by his host, Umaru Sisoko Mbalo. Welcome to your country, President Mbalo. I am very happy. I am more than happy to be here today. Yeah. <laughs> salutes of the respective countries. The two leaders inspected a guard of honor mounted by the Bissau Guinean Armed Forces. It then followed the ceremonial exchanges of greetings between the respective officials. A crowd of Gambian nationals resident in Bissau kept a lively atmosphere, attracting the attention of the president who took time to acknowledge their presence. <laughs> The two leaders held a brief tete-a-tete -tete at the airport lounge before addressing the pool of reporters who anxiously waited at the VIP salon. This is the first time you come to visit your own president and Bali. And we're going to start to break the area to make them the only return of the It's a great pleasure and an honor to be in Bissau for the first time in my life to be in Bissau. This is the first time. And I think we could not have come at a better time than now. But to come and see my brother, my friend, my colleague, President Bao. The motorcade later drove through Bissau to the Royal Hotel in the center of the city. After a brief rest, President Baro arrived at the main military camp to lay a wreath at the tomb of independence hero and revolutionary leader Amilcar Cabral. He also laid flowers at the tombs of several other independence heroes who paid the ultimate price to free Guinea-Bissau from Portuguese colonial rule. <laughs> Later in the afternoon, President Barrow was received at the presidential palace by his host, and the two leaders had a press conference where they both reaffirmed their commitment to strengthen relations. President Barrow described his visit as timely, given that both countries are determined. Take us forward, moving Africa forward, if we are not discussing. He urged the South Guineans to unite behind their new leader, describing President Barrow as very charismatic and hardworking. President Barrow, on the other hand, thanked President Barrow for honoring his invitation, even at a short notice, and spoke of the enduring bonds that unite the two countries. He said the Gambia and Guinea-Bissau should strive to eliminate all barriers that hinder the free movement of people and goods as enshrined in the ECOWAS protocols. He therefore took the first step 
by excluding Gambians from paying lesser passes when entering Guinea Bissau. The decision, he said, should be reciprocated by all across member countries. I already said the Minister of Interior and the Prime Minister, the Gambian vehicle they don't need lesser passes to come to Guinea Bissau. This is my own decision I wanted to hear because if we see the text of a course, we say that not for 15 days, 10 days, no, it's six months. And the Prime Minister, you're supposed to take this note to implement immediately. This is the decree of the President. The President later left the presidential palace for the hotel, where he is expected to meet the Gambian community for discussions. Maudu Jaro, GRTS News. Still on that visit, President Baro returned to Banjul after concluding an official visit to Bissau. Shortly after his arrival, President Baro spoke to the waiting press corps. It was very, very important for me to go and visit him in Bissau. This is a short visit, but it is a one-day visit, and I think there was need for us to visit him. It was one, Bissau is a neighbor. Bissau, they are our friends. Bissau, historically, we diplomatic ties have been between, between Gambia and Bissau for a long time. So it was cemented and consolidated, and to go and discuss with my counterpart, the new president, I think it's very, very important. That's why I was there. I think we had a very, very good meeting, and we discussed a lot of things, trade between Gambia and, and Bissau. If you look at Bissau, they are part of ECOWAS. They are a, how to call it, a Lusophon country, but they are within the ECOWAS. So that makes it very, very important. And our bilateral between us and Bissau is very, very key, because there is a lot of trade between Bissau and Gambia. A lot of Gambians also living in Bissau, and Bissauian living in the Gambia. Basically, it's the same, it's the same country. We speak the same language, we eat the same food. So we are the same people. But if we, are, if we are not visiting each other, we cannot discuss, and we cannot, you know, we cannot support each other. That's why I said I have to go there, so that we will have that interface, and I think it is important for both countries. Well, President Barra there speaking to journalists shortly after his return from Bissau. And now to the elections in Guinea. Hundreds of Guinean nationals in the Gambia have also taken part in their country's electoral process. To expand on the situation and some of the issues being aired, we now have Michel P. Koivuk, president of the Guinean IEC in the Gambia, who also doubles as the president of the ECOWAS citizens in the Gambia. Good evening, and it's a great pleasure to have you here with us. Good evening, madam. Okay. Now, first, what's the significance of Sunday's presidential elections in Guinea to the growth of, of democracy in West Africa? Uh, Sunday's uh, electoral uh, presidential elections mm -hmm. in Guinea is for the future of the youth. Mm -hmm. And it went on very well without any major incident. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a very big step for the democracy in West Africa. Mm -hmm. Now, whosoever wins will face development challenges. What do you think can be done to overcome these challenges? Yeah, you know, whoever wins is democracy. Mm -hmm. Democracy is always the winner mm -hmm. because democracy is the will of the people. Mm -hmm. So, and all the political parties, mm -hmm. they have plans for youth. Mm -hmm. And youth development is the, 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 the key mm -hmm. to any development nowadays. Okay. Now, many outside observers think the election is fought along ethnic, ethnic lines. Is that the case? Um, you know, Guinea is one country. Mm -hmm. Guinea is one country, one people. Mm -hmm. So the Guineans, they vote mm -hmm. for Guinea and those who vote, they are Guineans, and they are voting for the country. So I can say it's one country, one people. One people. Yeah. So Guinea is a potential rich country endowed with many mineral resources. Uh, what is keeping it from reaching its full potential? Yeah, that's the reason why I'm saying that uh, the political parties, they have understood mm -hmm. that the key to development is the youth. Mm -hmm. So all of them, they have plans now mm -hmm. based focus, focus on the youth. Mm -hmm. 
So now finally, what is the latest from Election Commission? Who is leading, Konde or Selu Jalo? Oh, I think we are all sitting and waiting mm -hmm. like anyone else. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's wait for the final results. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best. When exactly are we expecting to see those results? Uh, let's follow it up. Okay. Yes. Follow yeah. it up. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Thank you so much, up. Michelle Koivuk, um, the president of the Guinean IEC in the Gambia and the ECOWAS president, for Ga um, ECOWAS president in the Gambia. Well, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome, madam. Moving on, a high court judge in Banjul on Wednesday ordered the parties in the protracted murder trial involving Yanku Baturi, former APRC junta member and one-time minister, to search the missing original text of the 1997 constitution before delivering his ruling on that constitutional immunity motion filed by the defense. The trial judge made the order after both the prosecution and defense made their final submission on constitutional immunity clause in the 1997 constitution with certain portions were missing. Baba Sira reports. My High Court Judge Ibrahim Ajede came after the State Council Keta rap of his submission opposing the defense application for his claim to be freed based on the 1997 constitution and by virtue of his membership in the defunct AFPRC junta. Earlier, referencing paragraph 31 of the 1997 constitution, state prosecutor Tar said the original version of the 1997 constitution provides that no member of AFPRC or any person appointed as minister by the council or other appointee shall be held liable either jointly or severally of any act or omission in the performance of their official duty during the administration of the council. The state council submitted that there is a clear line drawn in being held liable, noting that the former proposes legal liability while the latter presupposes liability or a fine. According to the state council, paragraph 31 of the constitution provides immunity from legal proceedings against council members or other appointees in the act of their official duty. The State Council Tahu who appear alongside a team of lawyers further submitted that there is no need for the court to interpret the said paragraph or refer it to the Supreme Court for interpretation. The accused is not entitled to that immunity in paragraph 31 of the Constitution, according to the State Council, who refer the court to paragraph 35 and slam to this application acts premature and brief of authority in the absence of two applicants who can provide a relevant source. Replying on points of law, Tourist defense argued that once the accused has proven jurisdiction, the court cannot make any new order. The trial judge, Justice Ibrahim Ajete, subsequently adjourned the case to next week for parties to provide the original text of the 1997 constitution before he delivers any ruling on immunity motion. Reporting for the news, I am Baba Silla. The Minister of Agriculture, Ami Fabure, continues her nationwide tour across the country where she conducted field visits in the Central River region north and south. Janketure reports. Day 3 and 4 of Agriculture Minister's tour was a busy one as the tour party visited different farming communities within the Central River region south and north. Some of the places visited were Jokul, Mahmoud Fana, Boyram, Fas Abdul, Maru Rice Farm at Jahali Pachar, Sapro Rice Seed Store, Njao Granite Farm owned by the governor of CRR, Salt Tolerance Variety Rice at Moro Sangule Village amongst others. Amar Sisi's farm in Jokul, CRR South, was also visited by the visiting officials. After witnessing a spectacular performance by the young farmer, he used the opportunity to appeal help in order to intensify his farming activities. At Mahmoud Fana, the ministerial delegation visited a project site owned by Nari. Fatou Samba from Naofa thanked the president for appointing a female agriculture minister who is ensuring that farming becomes the priority for all. A brief visit was also extended to Governor Abasanyang's granite farm in Jao, CRR North where he is expecting a bumper harvest. My trust in agriculture is I don't want to eat any meat imported. Mm -hmm. I don't want to buy any food imported. Mm -hmm. I want to buy any drink or juice imported. Mm -hmm. It's my policy. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't take canned drinks. Mm -hmm. I don't take candies. Mm -hmm. I don't take sardines. Mm -hmm. Now I'm coming to turn up completely. The rice I'm going to eat, mm -hmm. 
really bought from other farms. And when we have inputs, we also look at what we call prominent farmers. Even though we think they are better off, but we must make sure we give them support to boost their morale so as that they can become more commercial. The Minister of Agriculture, Ami Fabre, and the Deputy Permanent Secretary, Musa M. Huma, described this year's farming season a promising one. I'm so impressed for this year cropping season, this rainy season production, because the fields I visited, ranging from groundnut, rice, maize, even the millet farms we have seen, there will be a bumper harvest this year, especially groundnut. And uh, the amazing thing is that uh, they're talking about uh, marketing. But this year, we want to announce the groundnut price early than our neighboring country. And uh, there will be an increase in buying of groundnut also. And uh, there will be no credit buying. These are the amazing things. Yeah. So we want our farmers to see agriculture as a business, as commercial farming. And His Excellency President Adam Abaru is ready to support our Gambian farmers. Because last year he, he promised farmers that their fertilizer will come on, on time. And obviously this year fertilizer came in April. And at the moment, if you go to some of our stores, you have seen it. They are a fertilizer. So we are here to support our farmers. It is very impressive that the groundnut field is uh, very clean. And uh, we are hoping that uh, um, in a couple of uh, weeks, it will be harvested and we will have a very good yield from this groundnut looking at the yield component of the groundnut crop right now. And the other impression is that uh, the whole governor of the region is uh, coming in the field and practicing agriculture. That would uh, demystify the myth that farming is for the poor, is for the destitute, is for the hopeless. Um, if he does it, then other civil servants can look up to him and get into farming. With the outlook of things, Officials believed by 2030, Gambia should feed herself with homegrown rice and as well export to other countries. The agriculture fields visit continues to the Upper River region. Janke Ture reporting for GRTS News in the Central River region. October 20th each year is set aside as the International Day of Chefs. In the Gambia, the Association of Gambian Chefs has joined their counterparts from around the world to observe the day. Modu Bajan was with the celebrants and reports on the 2020 commemoration under the theme, Healthy Food for the Future. As well as sharing and transferring culinary knowledge and skills to children, the Secretary, Association of Gambian Chefs, Usman Mani, and the President of the Association, Sehu Bojang, drew an important connection between agriculture tourism and call on Gambians to embrace their development. They also describe the kitchen and chefs as indeed the backbone of the hotel industry. Every tourism sector will have to depend on the chefs to boost their establishments. If you go to a restaurant and the meal experience is really bad, no matter how entertaining the environment is or the waiter or waitress is, but without a good meal, I'm not sure you will go back to that place again. Going by the day's 2020 campaign theme, Healthy Food for the Future, the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Tourism and Culture, Kodu Jabang Senghor, applauded the group for their achievements while emphasizing the importance of gastronomic tourism. It is indeed an honor to celebrate with you the 2020 World Chef Day and to also applaud your achievements which range from winning chef competitions internationally to providing free cooked meals to the frontline teams at border posts in the fight against COVID-19. Gastronomic tourism is an emerging phenomenon that is being advanced as a new tourism product due to the fact that over a third of tourist spending is devoted to food. It is recognized that there is great potential for food tourism to offer a sustainable tourism product. Daurenyang, Director General, Gambia Tourism and Hospitality Institute, GTHI, deliberated on several matters of World Chef Day, which started in 2004. Nyang underscored its significance in line with the food tourism objectives of the Ministry of Tourism and Culture. It has been focusing on healthy eating, educating the young ones, on eating the right thing. I think this is very much in line 
with the policy of our ministry because since 2018 we have embarked on trying to change the recipes of you know what being served in the tourism and hospitality industry now when i always talk to the chefs i tell them we should not limit to visiting tourists you know we should be promoting healthy eating across the board the day is not only of importance to officials of the industry Balajeng, a student at YMCA, told GRTS that he wants to become a chef for socio-economic and other reasons. I want to be a chef because I want to know how to cook so that I can uh, help my wife, but I specialize on waiter because chef and waiter are all connected. The food that you put inside your system have to be clean. And then the ingredients that you prepare, we have to know them. Because it's not every food that you eat. Some foods may be harmful to your system. Some food are for diets, some food are not for diet. I thank my good people who always motivated me to become a chef. With many arguing that what you eat is what you are, a lecturer at GTHI Peter Mendy also record the need for healthy eating. Considering food tourism as a strong selling point among a destination tourism products here, calls are renewed to embrace more internationally accepted Gambian dishes so as to boost the country's food culture and food tourism by extension. Hey, Africa! The news, this is Modu Bajan. Now, the Gambia Press Union, in its commitment to providing safe working environment, free from sexual harassment in any form for media workers, has organized a training on sexual harassment policy for the media in the Gambia. The policy, as Ibrahim Abba reports, seeks to promote and secure sp safe spaces for men and women in the media to do their work without abuse, fear, or discrimination. Sexual harassment is not only limited to what happens inside a specific media house, but also applies to all other places where media practitioners perform their work, such as public offices, community, and in the field as well. Lamin Jahate, program manager, Gambia Press Union, said that the GPU is carrying out all provisions of the policy and monitoring its effectiveness. He noted that sexual harassment is prevalent in all spheres of life in the Gambia and the main challenges include our culture perhaps in the Gambia, which is also a point, I, I mean, uh, an issue that came out in the research. It's that our culture seems to be a little tolerant to sexual harassment. Therefore, when it happens, we feel it, it is normal. We see it as something that is normal because from the society, from our culture to our work environment, sexual harassment issues will always come out, but they will always be seen as something that is normal. Therefore, recognizing it becomes very difficult. Deputizing the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Women, Children and Social Welfare, Lawa Drame, commended the GPU for what she described as timely. She condemned that sexual harassment in all forms, adding that it has no place in our society. It is our collective priority to ensure and prevent this indecent behavior and urge the government of the Gambia private sector and donor agencies to support those affected. We must ensure allegations of sexual harassment and gender and sexual violence are constantly reported and are responded to swiftly, appropriately and effectively by the appropriate authorities. The lead trainer, Demba Kande from the University of the Gambia School of Journalism and Digital Media stated that eight in every ten women face one form of sexual harassment or the other. We believe that uh, one way of dealing with uh, the issue of sexual violence is by using the media and using journalists to effectively report on this. Um, our research has also indicated that journalists reporting on sexual violence uh, issues and you know, sex and reproductive health generally is very, very low compared to other issues uh, around politics, for instance, the environment, and so on and so forth. And this is a very, very important component because it has to do with the health and life of a very important component of society, mostly women, uh, who are mostly the victims uh, in this case. And so we think that the media will be very, very effective in terms of trying to bring down the numbers uh, as far as uh, sexual violence and, uh, is concerned in this country. Participants such as Jul Denjai and Fatwai Sanyang express hope that the training will go a long way in curbing the menace of sexual harassment meted on women while executing their duties. For GRTS News, I am Ibrahim Abaha reporting. 
Well, that report by Ibrahim Abba takes us to our first break. We will be back with news from outside the Gambia right after. Imagine your life without connection. Every change comes with new challenges and opportunities. So now is the time for a new normal, new habits, new ways of communicating your love, needs and ambitions. Africa makes it possible. Staying apart, together, with one heart. And now with that, we come to the end of the news. But before we go, a quick look at our main stories once again. Gambia and Bissau Guinean leaders have agreed to work together to strengthen Banjo-Bissau relations. In the ongoing Usman Koro Sisi murder trial, High Court Judge Ibrahim Ajayte has ordered parties to produce original text of the 1997 constitution before he delivers any ruling on immunity motion. Giardes has been speaking to an official of the Guinean IEC in the Gambia about the elections in the West African country. Elsewhere around the world, anger and outrage across Nigeria after several protesters were reportedly shot dead at the Lake Toll Gate. And attaining justice for Darfur victims, for Darfur victims rather, ICC Chief Prosecutor has said Hassan al-Bashir must face justice without delay. Well, that was all in this edition of GRTS News at 8. Join us again at 10 p.m. For, for another news. Until then, stay tuned for GRTS. Catch our would be next and multi-sports later. nek rew mi gëna tuti ci Africa waye terewul dina dalal ñaareli xew xew bi gëna mak dajale kilifa yi ci aduna ci 2022 ci lolu nguuri Gambia dafa sos kurel guñ nan OIC Gambia OIC Gambia ñu sas len lepp lu aju ci dajale xaliss ak it jumtukaay yi ñoo wara jëfëndeko ngir soppi kanami dëkk bi ci anam buñ musu tegis lepp ngir gambia amdam ci dajje bu mag bi nga xamne rewi islami ci aduna yep dañu ko fi amal lu wara mat ñaar fukki tali us dañu ko tabax ci rewmi batil hadin highway itam dañu ko yaatal bu bax diganti airport besting corner aha kay askani gambia ajo won nañ ndox mu sel ak kurangu doy ba taxna dañu amal ay pexé yuy indi ndox ak it sédalé ko ci anam bo xamné ñepp dañu ci content nonu oic gambia dañu ful yok ñaar yoon anam bi nawek di joxé ndox ci rew mi ci jamono ji ba légui oic gambia dañu dolel police utal len ay jumtukaay yu xérañ bo lé kok di len tagat ngir gambia yépp am karangé tabax nañu international conference center bi gëna mak ci afrique saoudienta ak five star hotel bu mé